the film festival is back. and others make surgical foot covers but now these semiconductor chips are in short supply and it's taking nearly a month and a half to get them to the u.s one computer repair shop owner says the current semiconductor chip shortage is making it hard to keep her customers happy he's just not getting any power to his computer so he won't be able to operate for him until that ic chip is replaced and how long have y'all been waiting on that chip? It's been probably about 20 days now. In addition to computers, these chips are also used in cars, smartphones, TVs, refrigerators, and more, including arguably the most important items used during the pandemic, medical equipment, and the machines that create them. To put in mind that uh, these LED are very rare to get at first, uh, this pandemic created a much worse shortage that force us as a managers as entrepreneur to redesign our product texas medical technology makes gloves masks and devices like this toilet seat that scans urine levels and this automatic glove dispenser the shortage has been jacking up the cost i think my haircut will, uh, will show it all right <laughs> this is what happened after two years of shortage so sometimes that's correct but the FBI had been working overtime, locating the axle from the rider truck with the VIN number still visible. They traced it to the rental agency and then to the motel where McVeigh had stayed. He was first identified by motel records in Junction City, Kansas, where the rider truck used in the attack was leased. Motel employees there remembered him well. Tim McVeigh was a very outgoing, friendly person, neat, clean, nothing out of the average. But Timothy McVeigh was the FBI's John Doe number one, the most wanted man alive. Timothy McVeigh, a former soldier trained in demolition, is charged with committing the most deadly criminal act in the history of the United States. In Oklahoma, a federal complaint alleges that McVeigh harbors extreme anger at the federal government. It says McVeigh was especially upset over the Branch Davidian fire near Waco and that McVeigh visited the site of that fire and held the government responsible. The Oklahoma bombing came on the second anniversary of the Waco disaster. But Mc to seal it off, apparently intending to wait for the fighters to surrender when they run out of food or ammunition. Ukraine rejects any notion that Marupol has fallen into Russian hands, but if it has, that would represent the Kremlin's biggest victory yet in the war and give it a strategic boost as the Russian troops fail to capture the capital of Kyiv. The U.S. Thursday pledged an additional $1.3 billion, including $800 million for new weapons and $500 million in economic assistance to help Ukraine. News Nest Frank McCaffrey now has more on the specifics and what some critics are saying. I'm announcing another $800 million to further augment Ukraine's ability to fight in the east and the Donbass region. This package includes heavy artillery weapons, dozens of howitzers, and 144,000 rounds of ammunition to go with those howitzers. He also added more tactical drones to that list. They've been used for precision attacks and recent military actions. Biden praised the people of Ukraine and the fight they put up against Russia. He also gave us a variation of one of his favorite quotes. To modernize Teddy Roosevelt's famous advice, sometimes he will speak softly and carry a large javelin because we're sending a lot of those in as well. John Venable, a Heritage Foundation senior research fellow, tells us the javelins being sent overseas are costing us here. Our total stockpile when we bought it back in the early 2000s was around 22,000. That's bled down to where our 5,500 gift is about a third of the total stockpile that the United States has in its inventory. We've given that to uh, a third world country fighting a large adversary. He believes other U.S. weapons are going to dwindle away as well. How much more do we have? We don't have a stockpile of sea rams. Um, the, uh, the 155 millimeter howitzers, those came from a unit that we have here in the United States. They didn't come out of some storage facility that we had ready to go. And so when you're starting to think about continuing to support this, this is going to actually start bleeding into uh, the bank account of the U.S. military. However, Biden on Grand Cirque Drive in Roswell. Uh, the suspects were later arrested by police in Sandy Springs after their car broke down on 400. On top of the burglary, police said they also found a stash of drugs and firearms inside their vehicle. 
it's extremely encouraging to us to be able to get this stuff off of our streets where they won't be used in future crimes and just shows the power of the partnerships between us and our community as well as our local law enforcement agencies. Both men he was at the Exxon gas station on Glenwood Road last month. They say the two men placed Johnson in the trunk of her own car before letting her go on Wesley Chapel Road. They're now being held at the DeKalb County Jail without bond. The Fulton executing a search warrant earlier today. And deputies reportedly seized 10 pounds of marijuana and prescription pills, along with several thousand dollars in cash and loaded firearms. Four men were arrested during the operation, and police say they are connected with local gangs. The sheriff's office says they are, quote, sending a clear message that if you come to Fulton County with bad intentions, we will find you. Meanwhile, the Athens Clark County Police Department says they've arrested the suspected gunman who's accused of shooting an 18-year-old back in February. Police took 21-year-old Tavares Carswell into custody yesterday. He's now being charged with aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime, and reckless conduct. Police tell Fox 5 the shooting incident is still under investigation. Bond revocation and alleged infractions while in jail, including failure to comply. He actually set the fire inside the Fulton County Jail. That's February, I'm sorry, March the 28th, 22. Um, and he admitted to doing so that so that he wouldn't have to relocate housing units. Judge Manny asked the prosecution why much of that information wasn't presented at the hearing earlier this week where she granted Eppinger bond. Law enforcement sources previously told Fox 5 word of the bond spread quickly within the is live near the crash site tonight and Patrick there were actually people working at that factory at the time of the crash that's right this happened mid shift at the General Mills factory here in Covington and we're standing just outside the perimeter the crash itself happened roughly a hundred yards from where I am standing and actually just within the last five minutes we did get an update the initial investigation shows there were two people on board and officials told us the two worst words when covering a plane crash no survivors